Hi and welcome back to our matter unit and this video is going to be all about one particular molecule which is of course water. I figured I'd start with this famous picture of the earth because I think it gets at my main point which is that when you look at this picture the predominant color that you probably see is blue and that's because the earth is largely covered in liquid water which turns out to be incredibly incredibly important for the living systems that inhabit this planet. So let's go in and let's talk about why that is. The question we're trying to answer here is why is water required for life on Earth? And so in this video, we're gonna talk about the various properties of water. We'll spotlight a couple of them that make life possible on Earth. And we'll also talk about why biological systems require water. But I figured to start, we would just use this representation of a water molecule. So the big red atom in the middle is oxygen and the two white atoms on the sides are hydrogens. And I'm sure you probably already figured that out. What I wanna point out before we get too much further is that water is a polar covalent molecule. And so what that means is that the electrons are not shared equally in the bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogens are. And so it keeps the electrons in the bonds that it's made with hydrogen closer to it and further away from hydrogen. As a result, we get partial charges. We get a partially negative charge near the oxygen atom and we get partially positive charges near the hydrogen atom. And this is what the polarity in a polar covalent molecule refers to. The notion of a partially positive and partially negative pole to the molecule. This actually turns out to have a really important effect on the properties of water. Specifically, it allows water to engage in the process of hydrogen bonding. And so it's typical when we show hydrogen bonds to use these dashed lines to indicate that they are weaker than the forces that are holding the atoms together in a water molecule. But a hydrogen bond is an attraction between the partially positive ends of one water molecule and the partially negative ends of other water molecules. Each water molecule can engage in up to four hydrogen bonds. And even though these bonds are weaker than the forces inside of a water molecule, the fact that every water molecule in a sample is engaged in these hydrogen bonds gives water a lot of unique properties due to the additional energy that's involved in either breaking or forming these hydrogen bonds. And that's really where water's unique properties come from. So let's talk about some of those properties. The first property that we're going to discuss is the notion that water has a high specific heat. What we mean by this, specific heat is a measurement of the amount of energy that a substance can absorb before it increases in its temperature by one degree Celsius. This is a way of us understanding how the substance reacts to the absorption or release of a particular amount of heat. As a substance absorbs heat, the average kinetic energy of its molecules increases. Those molecules start moving faster and we experience that as the temperature of the substance going up. And of course, as a substance releases heat, the average kinetic energy of the molecules decreases. Those molecules start moving slower and we experience that as the temperature of the substance going down. Water, and specifically liquid water, has a very high specific heat. It's 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I don't really care if you guys have that committed to memory or not, though it's not too bad. But what you need to understand is that it is considerably higher than many other substances. So it's approximately 10 times higher than iron's specific heat, for instance. The reason for this is because of the hydrogen bonds in a sample of water. In order for the kinetic energy and motion of the molecules in a sample of water to increase, you not only need to give the molecules more energy, but you have to also put more energy in to disrupt the hydrogen bonds that are holding those molecules together. So it's the presence of those hydrogen bonds that really contributes to the increased specific heat in water. This is particularly useful for living systems because water serves as an excellent temperature buffer. As the temperature of the environment surrounding it increases or decreases, water does not increase or decrease in temperature as much. And the water also serves as a sink for some of that heat increase. Because as it absorbs energy, it's not increasing in temperature as much, the effect of having a lot of liquid water on the planet means that our temperatures are considerably more moderated than they would be if the liquid water was not present. The high specific heat of water is also used by living systems to cool down on hot days, as we see here with these elephants enjoying a nice little romp in this watering hole. By covering their bodies with water, they're providing a place for their body to transfer heat energy, which serves to quickly cool them down while it slowly heats up the water that's covering them. Moving on to our next property of water, we can see that ice floats. And this is actually pretty unique because for most substances, the solid form is actually more dense than the liquid form. And so the solid form would actually sink if you suspended it in the liquid form. But water is the opposite. The solid form of water, ice, is less dense 
than the liquid form. And so ice actually floats on the surface of water. The reason for this is because when water becomes a solid, each water molecule has to form the maximum number of hydrogen bonds with the water molecules that surround them. And so the overall effect is that the distance between water molecules in the crystal lattice of solid ice is actually further apart than the distance between water molecules when they are in the liquid phase and those hydrogen bonds can be continuously broken and reformed. This is really important for us because if ice actually sank to the bottom of liquid water, then the liquid water on the surface of any body of water would then freeze and sink, which would expose more liquid water to freeze and sink and so on and so forth. And all of the bodies of water on earth would actually freeze from the bottom up. Thankfully, that doesn't happen. The solid ice that forms on the surface of a body of water covers the liquid water below it and acts as an insulating layer, which slows down and largely prevents the water below the ice from freezing up, which is a really big deal if you are an organism that lives in water, like a fish. It is also really helpful for all life on the planet since it keeps liquid water on the surface of the earth, and as we discussed in our discussion of specific heat, water acts as a major temperature buffer for the planet. The polar nature of water also explains water's adhesive and cohesive properties, and here what we're talking about is water's general stickiness. So water actually turns out to be really good at sticking to all sorts of other substances and sticking to itself. And the reason for that is the polar nature of those water molecules. Any substance that water comes into contact with that has either partial positive and negative charges or full positive and negative charges can adhere or stick to water molecules. And that's why water is really good at sticking to our bodies, for instance, when we get out of the shower in the beginning of the day. But it's also why water is able to stick to things like the cell walls of the transport vessels inside of plants, which is useful given the role that water plays in plants' photosynthesis. Water is also really good at sticking to itself. That's called cohesion. And this is also very important in explaining things like the capillary action of water. As one water molecule moves through a substance, the attraction it has for other water molecules serve to pull those water molecules through the substance as well. Moving on to our next property of water, we have the ability of water to serve as an excellent solvent. Life's chemistry, and the chemistry that we'll talk about for the next couple of units certainly, is all solution-based chemistry. What we mean by that is that in order for it to work, the molecules have to be suspended in and surrounded by water molecules. And water is really excellent at dissolving anything that has a partially positive, partially negative, or full positive or negative charges. That's because of the polar nature of water. In order for a substance to dissolve, it has to be surrounded by solvent molecules. Here we see a cartoon of a sodium atom with its positive charge being surrounded by different water molecules. And you can see that in each case, the water is oriented so that the partially negatively charged oxygens are surrounding that sodium ion. This would be true for any other molecule that water dissolves. The saying here is that like dissolves like, and what we mean by this is that water is really good at dissolving other polar molecules, and of course ionic molecules with their full electrical charges. And finally, the polar nature of water explains the ability of water to dissociate. What we mean by this is that water will spontaneously break apart, which produces a proton and a hydroxide ion. This is really important in establishing the pH of any particular water-based solution. Substances that have more protons than hydroxide ions are referred to as acids, and substances that have more hydroxide ions than protons are referred to as bases. The pH level of a biological system is really, really important for the maintenance of that system. pH is also really important in biological systems by providing the necessary conditions for different molecules to work. So for instance, the enzymes in our stomach that are responsible for breaking apart the molecules in our food function optimally at a pH of about two. So it's the ability of water to produce acids and bases that really leads to the ability of biological systems to modulate their pH and control the activities that depend upon different pH levels. Not really connected to the polar nature of water, but really important is the point that water also participates in biological reactions. So for instance, in this reaction, we see two amino acids being bonded together, and you can see the relevant atoms involved highlighted in different colors, but notice that water is produced as a result of joining these two molecules together. This is called a dehydration synthesis reaction. The dehydration part refers to the fact that water is being removed, and synthesis means to build a larger molecule from simpler ones. Biological systems will frequently synthesize larger molecules, and in each case it is accomplished through a dehydration synthesis reaction. Of course, we can also do the opposite and break a molecule apart by adding water to it. This is called a hydrolysis reaction, the hydro part referring to the water, and lysis referring to splitting something apart. Notice that in both of these cases, water is actually directly participating in the reaction. So water isn't just a substance that makes the conditions possible for biological systems to exist. 
it's actually a direct participant in the chemistry of biological systems as well. And it's this dual role of water in both making the conditions for life necessary and directly participating in life processes that leads to the observation that living things are mostly made out of water. At the cellular level, water is the main component of a cell cytoplasm, and since all living things are made out of cells, all living things are, by extension, mostly made out of water molecules. Before we wrap up, I just want to make the point that every property of water is utilized by life on Earth. Water has a lot of unique properties as a substance, and each one of those works together in order to make life on Earth possible. It's important for you to understand what those properties are, how they emerge from the structure of water molecules, and how living systems use each of those properties to make life possible. So thanks so much for watching our discussion of the properties of water. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can explain what it means when we say that water is a polar molecule. Make sure that you can connect the polarity of water for, to its ability to engage in hydrogen bonding. Make sure you can connect water's polarity and its hydrogen bonds to its various unique properties. And then finally, make sure you can describe how water enables life on Earth to exist. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.